Hello everybody, welcome to my soap making tutorial for Dwarf Fortress. In this one, I'm going to explain how to make soap out of oil and out of tallow. I'm going to go over each of these chains step by step, explain the requirements and all those little things to pay attention to, so everything works out fine and your dwarfs don't try to mess it up. So, we're going to start with the requirements here. First of all, we require a soap maker's workshop, and we will always require a wood furnace and a ashery to make lyad. These are, regardless of which path you take, always necessary for your soap making. If we make now soap out of tallow, we will require a butcher and a kitchen. If we make our soap out of plant-based oil, we need a kern and a screw press and a jug. The jug can be made at the metalsmith's forge, or you can make it at a kiln, or I think glass should be also an option. Just make sure that if you're producing something out of earthenware, you need to glaze it first before it can hold oil. Jugs are small containers that are specifically made to carry small amounts of liquids, and without a jug, you won't be able to fill the oil. So that's the basics. We, we should have some other requirements in terms of ingredients, but we're going to go over these step by step. So first off, let's start with the tallow-based production. We need a animal to slaughter. So for our example here, we're going to slaughter a donkey. When you have a butcher's shop running, you don't need to do more than just uh, put up that check mark here and then automatically a job will be created at your butcher's workshop or at least it should and then we're going to have the uh here we go and then we're going to have the um, parts of the animal line here so what we're looking for is the donkey fat if you have your kitchen configured under default uh, settings you have it automated and that means the kitchen will automatically now pick up the glob of fat and render it into tallow. That's exactly what we want, so you don't need to do anything. But pay close attention after the slaughtering of an animal, because the next step is really important. Because otherwise your kitchen will steal your tallow. And that's something we don't want. So the moment this uh, ingredient reaction here has happened, we have tallow and now get on over to the labor menu get on over to the kitchen and forbid that donkey tallow for cooking otherwise your kitchen would now start to steal that and make meals out of it but since we want that stuff specifically for our soap production we can't allow that so next step we gotta make ourselves a bucket of lye what's quite important to note here is you make one dosage of lye, but in one bucket can be more than one dosage of lye. So basically, if we'd now make several work orders in a row, we'd have like uh, five units of lye in that bucket. Why do I talk so much about that? Because now we're making uh, soap and your dwarfs always will pick up the entire bucket of lye. So if you want to make only one piece of uh, soap, make only one piece of lye. So that's uh, the gist of it. This can be a real pain for automation because your dwarfs always pick up the entire bucket and whatnot. So for the sake of automated production, I personally think that the animal-based line is uh, not not ideal to put it into friendly words but uh, if you just want to make one piece of soap for your hospitals or two pieces of soap or whatnot this is a wonderful method and i strongly recommend it the other method that we're going to go over now the plant-based one is in my opinion easier to automate but much harder to set up in the first place so what we require first is we need quarry bush seeds, rock nuts to be specific. These are ideal. You can, of course, also do this with um, olives, but olives are, first of all, quite rare, but they have the benefit that you can skip one step if you have them. I'm going to talk about olives after the, uh, the oil seed um, press there. So uh, we're going to go over there. And the next thing that happens is our dwarfs pick up rock nuts to mill them into a paste. 
The thing here is, this destroys the rock nut. Rock nuts are seeds of quarry bushes. So, to make it like this, in an automated manner, you really need to take care that you don't destroy all the seeds that you want to put back on the fields, just to, so you know. Handle your work orders accordingly. So we now have that rock nut paste. Next important thing is we get on over to the labor, and, you know, your kitchen is a never-ending uh, source of chaos. So they want to use that rock nut paste now also for cooking, and we nope it out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wait until the rock nut paste has been transported away. And now we can make... Takes a moment until it's uh, available again. Here. Yeah. So, it has been uh, moved around in the stockpile, so that can happen from time to time. Press liquid from paste. That's what we want. If you have olives, you can go directly to press liquid from fruit, and you can skip that uh, part with the kern. Olives are pretty cool in that regard. So, next step requires the jug and the rock nut paste. I'm not quite sure how many other oil-bearing fruits there are that you can transform into paste and then uh, extract oil out of it. Feel free to uh, let me know in the comment section. And what we have now in the iron jug is rock nut oil. And the next step, you might have already guessed it, go over to the kitchen and make sure they don't mess you up again, because guess what? The rock nut oil is again a cooking ingredient, so really important. You have to follow this step by step when you do this for the first time, because otherwise your kitchen will nab your ingredients and nothing will work. So now we can make soap from oil, and that's that, and that's the entire process. It's really, in my opinion, very very important that you follow it for the first time step by step, because otherwise you will be in a real world of pain when it comes down to understanding why and where your ingredients went. But uh, just like that, you can make your soap without any problems. Just make sure that all the uh, in, in intermediate ingredients are not um, getting stolen by your kitchen. That's that's really the the in my uh, in my perception, like eighty percent of of the uh, difficulty of the soap making process is to understand and avoid the kitchen stealing your ingredients. So, few notes as an end of this video. First off, soap is a long lasting good. You have that stuff and it doesn't get used up by one dosage. You will need your soap for your hospitals because your hospital will need that stuff. Here's also the good news. When soap is in the hospital, it really lasts for a long time. So if you just want to make soap for your hospital, butchering one animal and transforming the tallow into soap, like here with the donkey, will get you through a long way. So as a little bit of a fun fact, your your dwarfs will also use soap to keep themselves clean. And if you manage to put up a room that has just a shallow pond of water and you put up a couple of uh, stockpile areas where there's soap stored, they will go to that pond of water and wash themselves there and be happy about the soap they use. But that's really only something if you are totally swimming in soap. It's really important that if you want to go for an oil-based production, that if you automate the work of the screw press and of the kern, that you really, really configure the work jobs accordingly, that you set a limit to, uh, to the seeds. Otherwise, uh, this production chain will destroy your agriculture. And since quarry bushes are really good at producing food, you, you best do something like this here, where you say every seed above 20 can be milled into paste. And that's a pretty good uh, common ground, in my opinion. Okay, I hope this uh, cleared out all the questions you had. Feel free to comment away if you have any questions still, or if you might want to add something into the, to the video, something you know, think I missed, or think is useful to know. I'm really eager to know because this game has so many detail levels. It's amazing and 
Feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video if you found it helpful and this makes it better visible for everybody. Also, feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. And I also have put up a playlist link in the description box below leading to all the other Dwarf Fortress tutorial videos that I made. And again, a big thanks to all the supporters of this channel. You guys make so many things possible and I really, really appreciate. If you want to find out how to support the channel, there are links down there to Patreon, Paypal and Buy Me A Coffee. And I'd be glad if you check them out. And if you cannot afford anything like that or you don't want to, don't fret. It's amazing that you're hanging around here and this supports the channel a lot as well. So I appreciate, I thank you for your time and enjoy gaming and see you soon.